that tells Dan, turn to page 65. Page 65, he's a wonderful savior. Page 65, standing as we sing. to be here this evening. Thank you for this place. Thank you, Lord, for that which we receive here. Thank you for the work that you're doing and you desire to do. We pray that we would avail ourselves to your word and your will tonight. May each of us receive something from thee. We pray your rich blessings on the service. Lord, be with those who cannot be with us tonight. We pray that you'd uh, strengthen them and encourage them. Pray for those that have joined us online. We pray the service be a blessing to them as well. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated.
to page 69. Page 69. Oh, how I love Jesus. Page 69. away. We're going to sing on the chorus. Oh, how I love Jesus. You know it. Here we go on the chorus. difference from up here. I don't know if you sensed it there or not, and where you're sitting, but the, uh, the volume, the fullness was excellent. It was great. So, praise the Lord for that. Uh, reminder that, of course, school begins again tomorrow after our fall break, but we have early dismissal on Friday uh, because our men are headed over to Indianapolis to the men's conference. And so, fellas, uh, first of all, if you want to get your registration uh, in, you can give that to Miss Audrey Todd. She'll receive that uh, for you. The cost for the conference is $25, the cost of the hotel uh, and the joint room is uh, $61. And then uh, we'll leave, if men if we'll, we'll meet here at 1.30 would be the plan, we'll get out of here as soon as we can. We've got to let some of our male staff, obviously got to help with uh, school dismissal there. So um, that'll be the, the plan there. If you're not gonna ride with us, please let me know so that uh, we are, have everyone accounted for. That would be helpful. And then again, a reminder, at the end of the month, uh, Thursday and Friday, October 28th and 29th, is our fall revival meeting with our brother Sam Davison. We look forward to having him back with us. It's been a couple years since he was here. Always grateful when we're able to have him, so that'll just be a two-night meeting. We'll move our, our uh, midweek service to that Thursday and then Friday of, of that week. So hope you'll plan to be here for that. It's just a few weeks away. Couple schedule changes uh, school-wise. Uh, the volleyball game for the girls that was scheduled for this Tuesday has been moved to Tuesday, October the 12th. Follow along because it gets better. <laughs> the ladies meeting that was scheduled for Tuesday, October the 12th, has been moved to the 19th. So both of those dates have been moved down a week. The electronic calendar's already been updated. If you have that on your device, you'll be, and you're following along with that, you'll be just fine. So those reminder about those uh, schedule schedule changes then uh, two other th announcements for you first of all next Sunday evening we'll have a send-off for the Smith family we're certainly going to miss them we've been right. uh, grateful to have them as a part here of Bethel Baptist Church and and uh, certainly uh, in agreement with them I believe the Lord's moved them moving them there to Greenville to, to be with family and and uh, thank you church for all the help that you've provided as they've uh, packed up but We'll have a send off for them next Sunday evening after the evening service. We'll have cake and ice cream. And so enjoy that time there. That'll be next Sunday evening after the evening service. They will probably still be here for a service or two and that'll be just fine. They're always welcome, but uh, Sunday night, we know uh, both of them will be here. So we'll have a send off for them 
uh, next Sunday night, a week from tonight. And then good news, Vicki Eubank is home from yeah. uh, rehab, of course, her recent surgery, and she's kind of been going through waves of uh, medical difficulty there, but she is home, and uh, we'd like to provide them some meals this week, so if you'd like to help with that, uh, we'd like to provide a meal each day for this week, and Miss Audrey is uh, keeping track of who's doing what when, so you can see her about that. There, there are some uh, limitations there. Uh, she is diabetic, so the, the meal, uh, the, the food needs to be uh, low sugar uh, to help, help with that. So you can see Audrey about that. If you have questions, she'll help with that and help get it organized so that five people don't take a meal on the same night. That, that would be an extra blessing, but not as much a blessing as it would be if it were spread out over five nights, right? You can see how that, that would be helpful. So, And the deacons, remember, will have a meeting after the service this evening. All right, we'll have our ushers come. We'll receive our offering tonight. As they're coming, I'm going to share with you that our special tonight is going to be three praise testimonies, and you get to choose one verse of a, your special song that you would like to, like us to sing together, as long as the director knows it. All right? If he doesn't know it, you get to lead it. So be cautious about that. All right? So we'll do that right after the offering. So if you want to prepare your, your testimony, your thoughts there, and then have your favorite, uh, your favorite hymn, uh, that number picked out, that would be the most helpful. All right? Brother Daniel, you want to pray for us tonight? Lord God, we thank you for the many blessings you give us each and every day. It's another opportunity to have us come to your house tonight. We pray you bless pastor as he speaks, Lord. I pray that our hearts should be fully focused on you tonight and put the distractions aside. I pray you bless the offering and the rest of the night. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We sure appreciate it. Amen, brother. All right, who would be first tonight? All right, Lisa. Um, I want to praise the Lord for my son. Um, my my daughters are wonderful and special, but um, I want to praise the Lord tonight for my son and that God give me a man child. Oh, praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Do you have a special? 169. 169. So find that, and Brother Grant will come because it would be super special if I were. <laughs> All right, we'll sing the first verse. You can stay seated. You can stay seated. First verse. Thank you. 
Oh, praise the Lord. That's wonderful. All right, that works. 506. Stand for this one. Let's go ahead and stand. Great is thy faithfulness. 818. Let's sing first and last. <laughs> Twenty-two in your Bible. I always, I, I always especially enjoy uh, testimonies. I always especially enjoy uh, when we change it up a little bit. Uh, even sometimes when we flub it up a little bit, uh, it seems like you know we're just we're just the family of God. And, uh, I'm not talking about sin or wickedness. I'm just talking about get off program a little bit. And, and as a blessing. Of course, the special, the choir special, and everything. It's always a blessing. The offertory, the trumpet, the piano uh, blesses my heart. Revelation chapter 22 and verse number 16 tonight. We're just going to read that one verse and bring a message from that passage of scripture. If you're able tonight, uh, would you stand in honor of the word of God? 
Revelation 22, 16. I'm going to make it sound like there's a comma there, but there isn't for you English teachers. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Our Heavenly Father, I pray tonight that we truly would listen to thee. Lord, your, your voice has drawn us to yourself. Your great power and love, mercy, kindness toward us, your loving kindness. Lord, I pray tonight we, we be sensitive to thee. In Jesus' name. I was about 20 years old, which is a long time ago. I went into business for myself. I had a mobile service station, which then there were service stations, which some of you don't know what those are. Uh, at the corner of I-496 and Pennsylvania Avenue in Lansing, Michigan. And I basically repaired cars and pumped gas. And I had guys to pump gas, I repaired cars until they didn't show up, and I pumped gas and repaired cars. <laughs> but, <clears throat> to say all that, I wanted to just use a flimsy illustration, but it's, it is a true one. One day I was uh, working in the back, and a guy came in, and he was angry. I mean, you know, you can tell when someone's angry, and he came in, and he's, where's the boss? And you remember, I was 20 years old. I understand now what a 20-year-old looks like <laughs> to a 70-year-old man. He looks like he's about 15. It's like when you go to your doctor and you say, are you the doctor? <laughs> but, uh, but this guy came in and he was upset. I want to see the boss. I said, I'm, I'm the boss. He said, no, I want to see the person that runs this place. I said, I, I run this place. No, I want to see the fellow that owns the... I said, that's me. Oh. And he changed his whole demeanor. I was the same person. Uh, but then he placed his complaint, I dealt with it, and we went on, and everything was fine. And I realized that sometimes as we're, we're reading the Word of God or listening to preaching, we, we really aren't listening to the Lord. And when we do that, we really miss out. You know, you can read your Bible because you're supposed to. Or you can read your Bible and listen to God. There's, a, there's, a, there's as much difference as night and day spiritually. And as we have gone through this book of Revelation, and we're almost, we're in the, we're in the last verses of this book. It's taken us a few years. And, and uh, we get to these the last few verses, and they're very, they're, they're just full of truth. I mean, they're, they're, they impact our lives. We get to the end of the book, and we know Revelation is not, it's, well, we think of Revelation of prophecy, but really this whole book is the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's all about him. Amen. And as we come to this particular verse, it's interesting because it says, I Jesus, he wants us to focus ourselves on the one that's speaking. In other words, if you, if you focused yourself on the preacher, you focused yourself way too low. I, Jesus. In other words, God's saying, listen, I want to speak to you. And most of us would think, oh, I, I know who's talking, preacher. But again, we're... we're we're thinking about what we know, not who we know. We're thinking about the Bible. We're not thinking about the author and the one who, through the Spirit of God, can speak to our hearts tonight. Let me try to illustrate that in another way. The, the disciples did the same thing that you and I do often. And that is, uh, they, would, they were around the Lord and they were listening to the Lord, but they really weren't listening to who he is. I didn't say who he was because he still is. Yeah. They weren't really listening to who he is. They, 
they, what they knew, they knew, and they were with him, and they knew that, and they knew that he was great, and they knew that he did miracles, and they knew all these things, but quite often uh, they would be caught and, and just realize, listen, I haven't taken this as seriously as I should have, and God gets their attention. One of those times was in, and I'm not going to turn there tonight, but one of those times was in Luke chapter 5. The Lord had been speaking to a great company of people, and, and, uh, and, and the, the disciples uh, had come in, they're listening to them, and, and you know, and, and he, was, he had to go out and speak to them out of uh, Peter's boat, and, uh, and he said, after he finished speaking, he said, uh, let's go out and, uh, uh, let's go out and catch, uh, uh, catch a bunch of fish. Now, that's not, that's my vernacular. Let's go out and catch a bunch of fish. And, and uh, uh, Peter said, uh, Lord, now that's identifying who he is, right? Or master. Uh, we fished all night. I mean, they're tired. And by the way, <clears throat> putting your nets in the water isn't, casting a pole and reeling it in. It's work. And so, Master, we fished all night and caught, you know the story, nothing. nothing. We didn't catch anything. Nevertheless, at thy word, can you hear it? Okay, I'll read my Bible. Okay, I'll listen to another message. I've heard Brother Howdy for hundred <coughs> years now. <coughs> And he's just getting old. I know you're not. I am. And uh, I'll listen to another message. Well, we'll, okay, Master, we'll do what you say. And I don't think he said it as disrespectfully as I just said it. But they went out, they did what he said. And often that's what we're doing. We're doing what he says. Okay, I'll read my Bible. Okay, I'll come to church. Okay, I'll listen to preaching. But then they went out and did what he said, and they took in a, a multitude of fish. And Peter, all of a sudden, Lord, he realized who he was. He, he bent with him. He realized who he was. Lord, depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. You see, when when you really realize who's speaking, the pastor talked this morning about humility, it really does humble you. It also opens your heart to God. In other words, this just isn't, oh, this is just another message. Uh, I, I get it. No, it opens your heart to God. When you realize and you're looking for God, God to speak to you. And that's exactly, I believe, what the message is here. I, Jesus, I, Jesus, God wants us to pay complete attention because he's going to speak to us about some things. I, Jesus, well, what does that mean? It means he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Well, what does it mean? It means he's, he, he's all authority, king of kings. There's nothing higher. There's no, when we go to God in prayer, there's no one... There's no place. There's nothing higher. There's no one that can do more. There's no one that cares more. When we go to God in prayer, he's listening. Amen. Uh, I wasn't going to share this story, but I listened to a preacher a couple weeks ago. I, I think I told my wife about it. A guy, an assistant pastor in the church, Pastor Brent. Now, you listen to this. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Assistant pastor in the church needed a needed a vehicle. I mean, he he just he needed a car, and I've been there. But he he went to the pastor. He said, "Look, I'm not coming for a raise. That's good to know, isn't it? <laughs> I'm not coming for a raise, but uh, I, I have to have a car. I've got a family, I've got children. My car's not safe. I don't know if it'll run. I don't know if it'll start. You have to park it on a hill. Uh, some some of us are driven those kind of cars. You have to park it on a hill. So if it won't start, you put it in gear and help. Uh, somebody push." And uh, if you got an automatic transmission, you don't get cars like that when you buy junkers. You, you make sure there are sticks so you can get them started. But he said, he said uh, I, need a, I need a car. He said, Pastor, I came to you, and I want you to pray with me about the car. I just need a car, something better than I have because my car's wore out. The pastor said, all right, I'll pray. He said a couple weeks went by, and 
<clears throat> one one night I was, I'm preaching, the pastor saying I'm preaching, and the guy comes forward, and this is one of the outstanding church members. In other words, uh, he just doesn't come forward every service, uh, but he he's a, a wonderful man that loves the Lord, and he came forward, and uh, he knelt and prayed, and he went back to his seat, and, and uh, after the service of pastors in the back, he goes through the line, he says, Pastor, he says, I need to talk to you after the service. The, the pastor said, uh, you know, he's wondering, what, you know, I hope he's not having family problems. Uh, I, that's what goes through pastor's mind. And uh, I hope, you know, there isn't something here I don't know about. I said, I love this guy. He went back, he said, look, he said, uh, you were preaching. He said, you didn't even preach about this, but God laid this on my heart and I came forward and, I, and uh, God told me to give my car to somebody. He says, I just got a brand new Chrysler. I, I don't know why you'd want to buy a brand new Chrysler. <laughs> I, and it was a Chrysler, this has been a few years ago, Cordova. Some of you don't even remember those, but I got a brand new Chrysler Cordova. It's about two years old. Here's the keys. He said, I don't know who God wants to give it to, but you do. He said, now wait a minute, I want to ask you a question. Has anybody approached you about the car? No. He said, I want to make sure my youth pastor wasn't going around saying, I need a car. He said, no one has said anything to me. God laid it on my heart tonight. Here's the keys. He said, by the way, could you give me a ride home? <laughs> <laughs> they called the assistant pastor in, gave him the car. Of course, it was one of those, you know. What I'm saying is we go to God in prayer. We, we hardly recognize we're going to God. And I've seen some of those kind of same answered prayers in my life, and they're amazing. But God hasn't changed. I, Jesus. When we listen to the word of God, we need to listen to God. He's king of kings. He's all authority. He's not only all authority, he's the creator of everything that is. And he sustains everything that is. He, he keeps it all going. He keeps it together. Uh, the, the Congress isn't keeping it together. The Senate isn't keeping it together. The President is keeping it together. It's not the countries of the world that are keeping our lives together. It's the Lord God Almighty. Amen. He created everything. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then we see the Lord Jesus is identified in this creation in John chapter 1 in verses 1 through 4 where it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. Verse 14 tells us that's Jesus Christ. The one incarnated in the flesh. I, Jesus, he is all authority. He's all ability. Then the Bible tells us in Ephesians, let me turn back there. You can turn there if you'd like. In Ephesians chapter 1. I love these passages of scripture like Ephesians 1. You know, we, we often skip over them because we're, uh, we're a little Calvinist shy. But, uh, but I'm not. Uh, they're just wrong. <clears throat> but you say, well, God knew I was going to get saved. No, God sent his son so that you could be saved. And before the foundation of the world, God knew everything. And he still does. That's all right with me. Uh, but he has made a way for every man, woman, boy, girl in this world to be saved. Uh, there is no such thing as a limited atonement. That's right. Let me say that again. That's, there's no such thing. But... We need to realize that God planned for Jesus Christ to come before the creation of the world. He planned for him to shed his blood and give his life and make a way for us to come to Christ. That was, that was predestinated for us to be conformed to the image of Christ after we were saved. And uh, that shouldn't, that shouldn't uh, uh, make you afraid. That ought to make you thrilled that God cared that much. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, according had he has chosen us in him, don't leave that out, because that's when we turn to Christ. Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ. Don't leave that out. By Jesus Christ, we come to him by our will, you know, uh, uh, through grace, uh, to himself according to the good pleasure of his will, 
to the praise of his glory, uh, to the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the blood, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Oh, what a blessing uh, to think about the sovereignty of God and uh, the the authorization that God has given us through the word of God. Well, what do you mean the authorization? Well, when we put our, when we believe God and we believe the promise of the word of God and we repent of our sin and turn to Christ and we ask God to save us according to the word of God, God never breaks his word. He'll save our soul. Oh, I'm so thankful for the work of God in someone's life. I, Jesus, uh, we know him as our savior. Scripturally, the root of, the Bible says the root and offspring of David. That's talking about his humanity. And then the bright and morning star. That's talking about uh, how, how Christ uh, is the, the, the brightest. Uh, everything else is be dim. Uh, but that bright and morning star, he illuminates above and beyond. His majesty is supreme to anything else. Isn't it an amazing thing? He also illuminates us. And that's what it says in the first chapter of John. He lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He illuminates us. And the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that Satan would blind their minds lest the light of the glorious gospel of God should shine unto them. And it shined in our hearts. Glory to God. Amen. I, Jesus. I want you to notice not only I, Jesus, he's speaking, but he, he's going to make some things clear here that are vitally important uh, to us. As we study this book and as we listen to the Lord, notice here again, <clears throat> verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I want you to know, <clears throat> Jesus said, I'm the one speaking. I've sent my angel. This is interesting. This has always interested me. My angel to testify unto you. <clears throat> In the churches, that word mine specifically means mine own. In other words, that one that's identified with Jesus Christ. I've sent a special person to testify these things in the churches. That word means messenger. My angel, that word means messenger, angel, messenger. I'll just read you Strong's uh, Greek here, in, in the, I'm not going to read the Greek, but uh, uh, definition. A messenger, especially an angel, by implication, a pastor. <clears throat> you know, we make, often we make two mistakes about a pastor. One is we give him too much credit. The other is we don't give him enough. In our time, usually it's not enough because we don't realize that God still calls and sends men to churches. We think we vote them in. I heard, I may have mentioned this in another message, but I heard a deacon say, and not our deacon, but a deacon say, uh, this man came to us and we hired him. Well, if you can hire a man of God, he's not a man. It doesn't mean you don't, he doesn't get a salary, but he should be here whether he gets one or not if he's called here. Um, <clears throat> turn to Ephesians chapter 4. The passage here is talking about Christ. Just let me read verse 7 just to put us in the right frame of mind. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now, I believe he's talking about <clears throat> all of our spiritual gifts, but jump down to verse 12. And he's talking about the ministry of those gifts. Uh, verse 11, excuse me. And he gave some apostles and some, and, and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body 
of Christ. Now, I just want to point one thing out here in verse number 11. The Bible says, and he gave. Who is that he? Jesus. And who did he give to the church? I, according to Revelation 22 here, the messenger to the church, I believe is a pastor. You say, well, our pastor's no angel. Amen. His wife knows that. His mother knows that. His dad knows that. His children know that. We're not, we're not talking about perfect holiness. We're talking about gifted leadership. But that leadership is for us. That's what I want you to see. So often today, we're, we're making decisions and we're, we're not following the word of God. We think that we are. Uh, and we're not following the word of God. The pastor's given authority in the church. Uh, and that, that authority is to be followed in Christ, is to be followed in the scripture, in Christ. But I want you to notice tonight, I, who, Jesus, I've sent my angel or my messenger, uh, and so the pastor stands in the authority of Christ. That's why the Bible tells us in Hebrews to obey them that have the rule over us uh, in the Lord. And I want you to go way back to the book of Exodus uh, tonight. I just want to point something out. Exodus chapter 14. And the last verse of the chapter... Verse 31. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord. Now, what are those next four words? Now, this is what we have trouble with today. We think it's wrong to follow man, it's not the wrong to follow man in Christ. And, and we, we, this, this media thing has flooded our, our uh, televisions and our computers and our telephones with charismatic speakers. And some of them are very good. Some of them are dangerous. And, and we, we need, what I'm, what I'm saying, I don't, I don't mean this, I'm not picking on anybody, I don't have, but we need pastors. They're sent from God. Right. If you have a real pastor, they're sent from the Lord. But what I'm saying is pray for your preacher. Pray for him that God would help him. You know, when, when, when Joshua went into the battle, uh, uh, her, uh, Moses had to hold his arms up. And as long as he held his arms up, they were winning the battle. And, and he got so he couldn't hold them up anymore. Humanly speaking, we only have so much ability. He could want to hold him up. All he, he couldn't hold. He couldn't hold him up anymore. And Aaron and her had to come and hold his arms up. Who was Moses for? God's people won. Now listen. They won. God's people won the battle when they held the arms of the man of God up. Are you following me tonight? So as we pray, we pray. Often we've got it backwards. Pastor, give me something. Pastor, give me something. We we get by giving. So honor the Lord with your prayer and pray for your preacher. Yeah. Hold his arms up in prayer. Hold him up. You say, well, 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 well he, he not. I know what he's not, but I'll tell you something. According to the word of God, I know what he is too. He's a messenger sent by God. Now, he doesn't have, his revelation's right here. Amen. He doesn't have special revelation. He has to study and work hard and seek the face of the Spirit of God to find out what we, by the way, the great message this morning, uh, to find out what we need and then deliver it in the power of the Spirit of God. But we need to hold that preacher's arms up in prayer. And we've got this idea, well, if it doesn't work here, I'll go down the road. If it doesn't work there, I'll find out what I like. Look, it isn't what you like, it what, it's what's the will of God. The best thing for me is the will of God in my life. The best thing for you is the will of God in your life. And that, that's, where, that's where life is. It's in the will of God. And God has chosen uh, to, to send us men of God to preach the word of God and the power of God, but we need to be listening to Jesus. 
Let me give you one more thing and I'm through. I know it's... Let me read the verse again. I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify unto you these things. Next three words, please. Churches. In the churches. I say, well, where, where else going to testify? Now listen to it. I want, you to, I want you to get this. In the churches. Testify unto who? You. What's that mean, Bob? It means you, doesn't it? It means me. Yeah, you. That's personal. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you in the church. It's all a big deal. You're making a big deal out of nothing. No, it is a big deal. That word in is, is the Greek word epi. Uh, it's in, in uh, it equals time, place, and order. That's a pretty big word, isn't it? Makes sense doctrinally, does it? Well, I, well preacher, I, I just listen. I just listen on the internet. Might have the time right. You don't have the right place. Well, what's the big deal? It's the same message. The big deal is your ministry. This isn't, this isn't a one-person ministry. This is a church. That's right. Amen. We're the body of Christ. You say, well, I'm not the pastor. No, by the way, in many ways, he's no more important than anybody else. Right. He's doing what God's called him to do. Are you doing what God's called you to do? You're part of the body of Christ. You know what your spiritual gifts are. You know you're here to minister to other people. You're here to minister the gospel of Christ. You're here uh, to edify and build up the, the body of believers in the Lord. You're here for that. Well, we're just the audience. We're just the spectators. That is not true. We're a church. Many, many years ago now, <clears throat> when I was the interim pastor here, that somebody wanted to define that in the business meeting. It was an ugly business meeting. Yeah. And, and uh, somebody, I, I was up here and, and, I, and uh, somebody asked me, uh, what authority does an interim pastor have? They, they about said it like that, but it was worse. Yeah. And of course, I didn't know what to say. You know, I'm really deep down inside, I'm just an auto mechanic from Lansing, Michigan. That's who I am. Yet yeah, God, I know God called me to, to ministry. I know he called me to be a pastor. And I said, same authority as a pastor. If he's a pastor, that's what he does. Of course, they got mad. I wasn't trying to make anybody sad or glad. I just tell them what I believe the word of God says. Shortly after that, one of the deacons came to me and said, Pastor, what are we going to do? We've got this group of people in the church and they're going to take the church over and they don't believe right. What are we going to do? Dave and Marie remember that. I said, well, the worst thing could happen, they could take all our buildings. We don't want to lose our buildings, this person said. I said, we're not a building, we're a people. I said, if that's the worst thing that happened, God will take care of that. I said, well, you really don't believe that. You know, I like our buildings. I know that they're valuable. I don't want to give them up. But we're not a building. We are the building of God. Amen. Amen. Us. We're the church. In the churches. Testify to you in the churches. You cannot really, truly hear the way God intends. Now, now please, I know we're online tonight. And I know that there's COVID, and our pastor really mentioned that well this morning. I thought, I don't know how he did it so well. Uh, I would have offended a bunch of people. Sometimes I've even done it on purpose. <laughs> I, I, I like what the pastor's wife up at where Tom, Tom's in the Upper Peninsula working now, in the church up there and serving the Lord. Pastor's wife says, you know, all this stuff going around, what are they, they going to do? They're going to 
they going to make us afraid because we're going to go to heaven? Uh, folks, that's the next step. We don't need to fear anything but being out of the will of God. We don't need to fear anything but being out of the will of God. What are you saying? In time, place, order. And that is a good description of the church meeting together. We are an assembly of blood-bought, born-again believers. That's what the church is. Brethren, we have met to worship and to adore the Lord our God. We meet here as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, who's most important in the church? Pastor. Some, some churches are led by just the pastor. Now, he is responsible before God. He'll give an account for his leadership. The deacons, some churches are led by the deacons. The Bible says he that desireth to be a deacon, he that wants to be a deacon, that's a, that's a very high position in the church, by the way. It really is. And they will give an account for how they served. I'm going to use their deaconship. Uh, it should not be taken lightly. Some churches are led by deacons. Some churches are led by both. In other words, a membership. Uh, I remember early on in the church, the church had a water heater go out. They couldn't even place a water heater until the church voted on it. I'm sorry. I think somebody ought to just replace the water heater. Uh, but here's the way church is supposed to be led. Jesus. That's where our confidence should be. Lord, what do you want us to do? Help us to discern what that is. We know it's going to be by faith, but we also know that in your power is also your blessing. Lord, lead us as a people. Let me read our verse again and I'll close. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I'm the root and offspring of David bright and morning star. Our Heavenly Father, I pray you'd help us tonight when we study our Bibles, when we listen to preaching, when we assemble ourselves together to listen to your voice, to listen to the Holy Ghost speak to our hearts, to impart truth to us, and may you change us according to your will and purpose. May we be sensitive to thee, Lord. Help us in our time to make a difference with the gospel of Christ. I pray if there's someone here tonight that's not sure about their salvation, where they'll spend eternity, I pray they come and be saved. I pray for us as a church, Lord, that we continue to go forward as we strive to honor you and worship you and lift you up and present the gospel of Christ. Bless the invitation tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's all stand together. Perhaps God spoke